Whether you're doing a title or a header for maybe a brochure or a flyer or even on your own website, there are a lot of ways that you can do text within Inkscape. And with it being summer, today I thought I would show you how to do a summer retro style. Hello my friends, welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. My name is Rob from Button Press Graphics and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a retro style of summer logo or a summer text. So without further ado, let's get started. So first in order to actually create a summer text logo, you need some text. So today I'm going to go to my text tool, which you can find here on the left hand side. I'm going to select that, click anywhere on the canvas to begin typing. And I'm just going to put summer vibes. Now going back to my select tool, I'm going to increase the size so it's easily visible. Now, of course, the font itself doesn't look very well, summer based. It looks very standard. Now, before I started recording this video, I already went on the hunt online to get myself a nice summer font. And I thought maybe a 70s retro style would work really well because of what I'm planning to do later on in this video. Now, in order to use that font, you're going to need to open up your font editor, which you can find on the right hand side right here. If you're using a previous version of Inkscape by default, it is going to be on the top, just underneath the file bar. Now the font that I'm going to be using is called Super Rocky. I will leave a link for it in the description, but if you're wanting to use it, then please be aware you have to install the font first. This can be done by downloading the font. And once you have got it downloaded, go into the folder where you downloaded it double click on the font file and when it opens the next window click install you will have to do this before opening up inkscape and if inkscape is already open you will need to restart the application for it to appear within your font library now that i have the text that i want it's looking a lot more well summer based so now i'm just going to convert this to a path I'm going to go to path, object to path. And as you can see, now it is no longer a text object. It is a group of two different objects. Now what it has done is grouped both of these together, word by word. Now if we want to ungroup them, we can come across and find this little icon here. The yellow box with the circle over the top, and this is ungroup select that and it is now ungroup them both from each other now with that done i'm going to just position this exactly where i want it to be and now i'm just going to hold shift select them both and i'm going to go to path union and now no matter what changes i make to this it is going to stay together now, first things first, I'm going to change the color of this to a dark blue, and then I'm going to right click and duplicate, and then change the color to a different blue so I can differentiate between the two. I'm also going to go to my fill and stroke menu, which is right here, but if you haven't got it open by default, then you can find it with this icon right here that says open fill and stroke again all of these icons on the right hand side of my screen if you are using a previous version of inkscape are going to be underneath the file bar at the top here now that i have this i'm going to just drop the opacity in half the reason i'm doing this is because i'm about to increase the offset and in order to increase this offset i need to go to path and come down to dynamic offset which is Control and j if you want to use the shortcut now with the node tool selected you can see there is just this one single node and i'm going to now click and drag 
to increase until I get a nice buffer around the side like so now the reason that I have done this is because I want to give that summer effect and in order to give that summer effect I want that to be coming outwards towards myself so now with it where I want I'm just going to go to path object to path and now it should look something like this but as you can see if I zoom in there are a lot of gaps here of negative space and here and I don't want any of them but they are easy to get rid of you can either just select and highlight all the nodes and hit delete but there is a different way of doing it as well let me turn up the opacity so now you can't see the text that's underneath using my select tool as you can see there are still five areas but we can go through path and then go down to break apart and now it has broken all of the different areas up but with them all broken up and all the different areas selected we can go back to path and then we select union and just like that we now have a solid shape now with this selected i'm going to drop this down to the bottom and as you can see we already have a much better look but we are not done what i want to do now is i want to duplicate this again and i'm going to change the color so it's easier to see and now i'm just going to reduce the size slightly and I'm holding control and shift while I do this so I can lock in the proportions and it doesn't squeeze in on the vertical rather than the horizontal or vice versa. We just have to position this to exactly where we want. And if you wish to resize it just to get it exactly perfect, you can do and I think that would be around perfect for me. Once you have got to the position exactly where you want and feel free to drop the opacity like so, if you want to make sure that it is absolutely spot on, then you can. But once you are happy, we are now going to drop this to the bottom by selecting this button right here. Lower the selection to the bottom. And now we are going to use an extension. The extension we're going to use is going to join this object with this one. So in order to do that, we need to have them both selected. Hold shift, select them both, and then go to extensions, generate from path, and extrude between two paths. Now, if you're wanting to know exactly what it does, click the live preview and you can see a preview of exactly what's going to happen. And as you can see, we now have a very cool effect going from one shape to another. And all it has done is broken up all of the different lines into sections. So now that we know we have the look that we're aiming for, we can click apply and then close out of it now like i said it is made up of lots of different shapes as you can see with it selected it says group of 161 objects yours might have a different amount of objects but that is just saying that it is part of a group so first off we need to separate the group you can do that again by coming to the ungroup button and as you can see, there are a lot of different shapes. But now that we have all the shapes separate, if we union them together, they will all become one shape. So we go to Path, Union. Now, of course, as you can see, you can still see the green behind it because it is opaque. So go back to your Fill and Stroke menu and in the alpha bar, just turn it completely up and we will have a black shape behind now i've worked with a lot of the different colors and in my personal opinion the color that seems to work the best is black so i'm going to use black on both that one 
and this one. And for this shape itself, I'm going to make sure that I turn off any stroke. And then I'm going to hold shift to get them both selected at the same time and go back to path union. And we have something that looks like this. Now there is one more thing that you can do to this text to make it look a lot more, well, summary. If that is even a word. What we are going to do to make it more of a retro style. So for example, if I come to my fill menu and I select a gradient. If we select some warm colours like oranges, yellows and reds. And even maybe adding some extra colours in there, some more warm tones. We can get a really cool summer vibe just like this. But you can even go one step further and make it feel a whole lot deeper. The retro styles that you used to see from the 1970s and 1980s used to have lines going through that would get thicker as they went down. What I mean by this is if we come over here, we can draw some lines just like so. And with those lines selected, we can just drag and stamp a load of copies. And now we can select them all and we can make sure that they're all evenly spaced, just like so. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can do this next step. But for argument's sake and just to make it easy for you, I am going to select the next one down, come to my fill and stroke menu, and then I'm just going to increase the stroke to two. And then I'm going to do the next at three. And so on and so forth as I go down. Now, as I said, there are many, many different ways that you can do this method, but I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible so it's easy for you to follow along. And that is probably the easiest way of doing it, even if it is the most time consuming. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make them a full object and not a stroke. Now, the first step to doing that is by going to path, stroke to path. And then I'm going to go path union. Now, if you was to do this without going stroke to path, it's still classed as a stroke. So you would not get the look that you're wanting. By using stroke to path first, that has converted them into blocks instead of strokes. So stroke to path is going to now change them and convert them to an object rather than a stroke. And then when you union them together, they will keep all the same dimensions. And now if I stick this over the top and I make sure that it's covered completely, I will be able to repeat this and do it again over the top by going right click, duplicate, and then just dragging this one down. And you can, of course, reposition it and get the look that you want. I think something going halfway up, something like this, will work perfectly. And now I'm going to union these two together, like so. And with it selected, I'm going to select the text. And I'm going to go to Path and Difference. And just like that, you now have your summer text. Now, of course, you can obviously change the colours as well. There are lots of different colour combinations that you can use, but you can use this kind of method to creating some really cool and eye-catching designs. You can even go one step further. By adding some highlights onto this, you can make it look like it's 3D or bubble writing. Now you can do this by simply creating some circles or by creating some shapes 
with your pen tool. Let's take the S for example. What we want to do is just create a highlight in the corner of every letter. Now in order to do this, I'm just going to quickly create some shapes by turning them white we get a look a little bit like this and we're going to go for every single corner that is on the upper left side as you can see we now have something that looks a whole lot more professional and there you have it my friends that's how you can make a summer style text logo or title or header did you know that you can become a member of the button press graphics youtube channel well now you do you will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel enabling me to make much better content in the future also you can send in your artwork into the creative corner this is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.